give you a little demonstration, small size here, of what I do in the class. This is mainly assembling a collage, but with me assembling a collage, we make all kinds of different papers. And this is just um, a piece of white drawing paper that was painted black, and then I've sanded it. This is some deli paper that was printed or uh, painted gray and then printed uh, with uh, corrugated. Um, this is your craft paper that um, we have a fun time of just doing all different kinds of experimenting with stamps and drawing and mixed media. We create a big sheet of paper. Again, this I believe this is um, this is a small sample piece from a um, uh, uh, an engineer plans um, from a hospital that I had. This is deli, or not deli, this is tissue paper that we paint and um, so I like to have everybody come there and um, create from the very beginning their own papers and bring that all the way through um, so they're unique style and, and touch and choices work all the way through the papers. And here's even just a book page here that we just kind of put some gesso or a, um, a gloss on there and blacked out, blacked out areas and added color. And so we can use book pages, all kinds of papers that we may discard. We repurpose the surface of them. So today I'm just going to take these little small pieces and then this is an image transfer of a tree. So this is a copyright free image and then you turn it over and fuse it on there. So let's see what happens. Let's get started. Now this one is already prepared and I'm going to work on this one but I'm going to show you how I prepare it. Uh, especially if I'm using watercolor paper, I like to tape off the edges so then after I'm done and I've done all the different things to the surface and um, I can cut that tape off and I'll have a nice finished edge. I like to use this white tape here and it's um, by Uline number 3051, but if you can't find it, it is a little more expensive. Then I like to use a painter's tape. Not an artist tape, but a delicate painter's tape. It's got to be able to pull off the paper without pulling the paper off. Um, so I'm just going to start off with the white paper here, or white tape I mean, and I'm going to tape the edge and I just, this is just a little six by six piece of watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Okay. And I'm just going to tape off the edges. Now, my collages go on canvas. I put them on wood panels. I've done them on skateboards. I've done um, collaging and assemblage on violins. Um, this is where I start, though, is on the watercolor paper, because then I can move it to different things, frame it, mat it. Um, but it's not just solely just on the watercolor paper. I like the 140 pounds. Um, it's a nice, sturdy. Um, paper. If I go larger, I like to go up to like um, the 300 pound uh, watercolor paper. So now everything in my process of doing this collaging, which I've learned from uh, Jonathan Talbot, is that um, you have to coat all your papers beforehand and the surface you're going to work with. And before learning about using the tack iron in this, I also did the coating and learned about that from all the other collage artists that are out there, um, that it with these different papers, by coating the papers, you actually seal in the acids and you protect them from each other. So it really um, allows the collage to, to live longer than you would think. You know, it, it kind of preserves it by putting the layer of the um, mediums over it. And then I learned from Jonathan Talbot to use the gloss and then the tack iron and heat fuse it into place. So I've been doing this and working with Jonathan for a long time and, um, you know, sharing his technique, but then also adding my own different kind of things into this. So um, this is what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take the gloss medium and I am going to um, coat the top. I'm just taking a paintbrush. I am going over the little taped edge and just getting that to, you know, a nice thin coat that's there. And then what I do is I let this dry. So now here's um, one that's dry. So we'll move into um, working with this piece here. Okay. 
And um, I'm going to start off with this piece here. And I'm, I like this, you know, a little tinge of color on either side, a little bit of the green that's there. I have this piece of paper here, you know, and I'm looking at some of the greens and some of the stronger colors that are separated here. Um, I'm going to just take this. Now you can use scissors, um, you can tear. There's no um, certain whatever you would like to work with in here. Now I'm going to bring this up here and I'm just thinking about maybe putting the tree in here. It may go off a little bit so I'm, I'm having to be aware of that. Okay, there's that. Okay, it's taking up that spot there. And I think what I'm going to do is fold this just a little bit, use my nail, and you get a more precise tear. Okay, and then I'm going to take the black here and um, Let's cut a piece, set that off to the side, okay. In the process of working with collage, there is a lot of personal choice. Um, and this is what I like to teach everybody is like, you know, do you like it, do you not like it? Um, make those choices in here. All right, I'm going to give it a little bit of an edge here, maybe where that tree is going to stand here. It can go on top of there. All right, still have that background. All right, I'm going to put that there. Okay, and I did pick this paper out. And sometimes what happens is I like to stay between five to seven pieces of paper. And what happens is, is you know, I'm, I've got this palette right around me to work with. And my idea or my theme that I'm, you know, bringing this tree in there. So it's going to have kind of a landscape um, appeal to it. But how else can I introduce, you know, all these colors and bring that in here? So, um... It's, it, it, it's a fun, um, playful, but yet it can get very serious, you know, on how you, you work all of this in. So I'm going to put this over here instead of just keeping this plain that's right there. Now this paper I picked out because it was a different paper. It had some interesting shapes. It kind of stuck together here a little bit um, for the base. I'm not sure these are choices that I make as I'm working through that. So let's take this and tear this a little bit into a smaller area. Now I'm going out over to the edge and the taped area. So it's like growing out. This will get cut off um, later on. So I'm going to scoot this up. Okay. And I have some interest here. I'm going to slide this in underneath there. All right. And fold that over. I like that there. Okay. I can bring this piece back in here, and I just, I, just as I'm doing it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that in there. Working with the collage in this way, we don't have a reference. So what we're going to do is, you know, just rely on color and shape and repeating patterns and, and getting you to move around the surface, this composition, this area, using um, the colors, the size, the font, repeated things. So actually, I kind of, I like this coming back in here. I'm playing with this long section. Um, let's take and tear this stripe, reintroduce this gray. All right, here. Interlaying these layers, um, interesting papers, contrast in there. Okay, there's that. Oh, I like that. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to repeat that stripe, so I'm going to slide this in. So right now, at this point, everything is just laying on here. If you were working in collage um, where you would have to glue everything, you would have to take this all off and then glue it back on and remember where all these little pieces went. And that gets to be kind of frustrating for some people because they want it back in a certain way. With this technique, then I just leave it the way it is and I fuse it into place. So um, just making some color choices here. 
and then I've got this kind of flipped over. Do I want to put, you know, and I try different things, and I put this in there, and I've got this one area that has that angle. There's an angle that's over here, but the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself, do I like that? No, I don't like that. So um, I'm just going to kind of crinkle that a bit, let that be. Okay, and I've got the black that's in there. Do we want to introduce this black in there again? Maybe bring that down. This is kind of a interesting um, crunch area in this paper. And then I'm, I know that I'm going to cut off here some of this. So I'm going to, and then I'm looking, now there's some words. It says, get back to sleep. Okay, so maybe I'll leave that visible that's right there. So at this point, I like the way things are set up. I can always add more paper in there, um, playing with this, you know, bringing that, all that back in here, here and there, slide it in. But I like what I've got right here, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse it into place. So this is a um, Teflon parchment sheet. And it allows the heat from the iron to go through and not have it stick to um, the iron. So I'm going to iron this right now. You can use your house iron on a cotton setting. Um, it is more cumbersome to work with than these um, heat seal irons, or I like to just call it a tack iron. All right. And as you can see, I'm moving it around. I'm applying the heat. The heat's like 100, and, or it says 280 degrees here. And then now I'm going to move this up here, and I'm going to fuse the top section. You're always going to make sure this is laying over, or the iron, it'll touch that, that paper, and it'll just stick and melt and make some black, black yuck on the, on the top of it. So you just have to make sure that that's fused down. Okay. And I can see this one area here is infused real good, so I'm going to come back in. Just get that. Okay, I added a few more pieces in here before I moved on, before we move on to the glazing. Um, I've trimmed around my little image transfer. This is just printed with a laser printer. Um, on copy paper. Uh, you can print um, uh, your own photos in color or in black and white. I'm just sticking to the black and white here. Um, like I said before, we tape the edges. There's that sample. Um, we tape the edges off. Um, and these are, as you can see, it's going over the edge. That's okay. Later on, the tape will be cut off with an X-Acto knife, and you'll have a nice finished piece. I'm hoping that's where we'll get to today. Um, right now, I'm mixing up my glazing medium. I'm going to move this over to the side. I have a little palette here. And um, I have glazing medium there, which is different than the gloss medium. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of um, black in there. Because that's going to be the glaze I'm going to um, make with this. I have black here, black letters. This will go all onto the edges, and you'll see how each of these papers will stand out. Um, so I'm going to take my brush here and just mix it up. I like to... Um, Put like two thirds of the glazing medium to a third of the acrylic. Um, it makes it it's nice and creamy, and um, this is going to make a mess. Um, let me get a little bit of newspaper underneath there. Okay, as you can see, I'm already making a mess. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna put some newspaper under there, and then what I'm going to do is now this is all cooled. Um, never go into your collage after you just fused it and then use the um, glazing medium. It just sticks. It just move, it, You can't wipe it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on, apply it, and it's going to glaze over everything. And then um, you know we're going to still work into it and do our collage. So um, this is always the scary part: um, is coating this all um, with the glazing medium. Some people like it, some don't. Um, I like to do this in the work. It makes it look like the papers have been together for a long, long time versus just a couple of minutes. So I'm going to first um, subtract off. You know, I've applied this on here, and now I'm going to subtract it off with the paper towel. I just do in a light rolling because sometimes the edges of some of these papers have been torn and um, 
and they may lift a little bit if I get too aggressive with this. So I'm just kind of rolling around. Remember now with this outside edge that you see the grungy edge, um, that will be um, cut off. So you'll see a nice clean white edge. And this is the part where I get all excited about it afterwards. Okay, you can see how um, these papers, however the papers were, let me bring this up a little bit closer. You can see how some of these papers have just some wonderful character that had happened to them in the process of creating them. So I've subtracted off with the paper towel and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, baby wipe and it's going to pull up more so I'll get some lighter values. Um, people say, well, why, you know, you're pulling all of this off. I am to an extent, and then I'm adding some, like I say, it's bringing in some wonderful character. The outside edges of the papers um, really soak up where I've cut or torn. It soaks up the... Um, the uh, glazing medium and as you can see I'm I'm bringing that light back in so now I can decide how much I want to take off how much I want to put in here bring those high cut bring the colors back okay I think I like that all right and at this point now I'm just going to use some regular um, just the acrylic um, I, I like to use the fluid acrylics I'm just going to put a little bit here. All I need is just a little bit. I'm making a mess of myself here, but that's all right. That's what the fun is. I'm going to take a small um, paintbrush here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around some of these other at paper's edges and really emphasize them even more than with the, um, with the glazing medium, just to add a little bit more shadowing, more depth of the paper, um, and just go around the edges here a little bit more. Now some of this may get cut off, that's okay, we'll see how it works and go along with this here. Okay, I like this edge here, and I'm going to even kind of play with that a little bit in the painted area and glaze it. Now I wiped it off before, now I'm adding it on. And this is the beauty of it. You can kind of add and subtract as you like it. Okay. And using these different papers, it just adds such uniqueness to your work. This is over here. I'm really excited about this. This is like the um, the tissue paper the tissue paper is, um, it's real thin, and you can fold it, and it can add some really interesting areas to emphasize um, and shadow around. I'm going to turn this here. It's kind of shiny right now because of the um, gloss that's on there, but when I finish my work, I do use a satin varnish that's there. And actually now I'm emphasizing where this yellow or the white creamy paper is underneath there. I'm playing with that um, depth that's there and just even adding that it creates more line in the, um, in the work. So I've got color, I've got shapes, I got value. Um, this is really, like I say, it's pulling all the different elements and principles of design and together. And being that we don't use a reference, I mean, we may be inspired by things, but we don't have a photograph that's right here. So really, we're pulling from um, how we feel that day, maybe, um, and colors and things that we're inspired by um, versus using a photograph or going outside and doing plein air. Um, it would be really cool. I've done it a few times. I've done some life drawing classes with collage. Um, it all depends on where you want to go with it and how far you want to take um, this collage work. But I just have such a great time, fun time, working with the different papers that are out there. Um, you know, maps, old book pages, dictionary pages, envelopes, the inside of the envelopes, you know, all those different things like that, that, you know, we just think, eh, it's nothing, you know. Um, here we're giving it some new life and bringing in new purpose. And then when people look at the work, they see what you've used 
and um, actually are very amazed at like, wow, look at that. That was engineer plans or look at the way that um, that book page, you know, from the dictionary, you know, worked out. So as you can see, I've gone around and um, shadowed around some of the um, papers that are here. I'm going to kind of emphasize this a little bit in here. Okay. Just the edges, you know, to show more shadow that that one was on top versus the one that was underneath. Some of this, like I say, will get cut off. Okay. And some right here. Just play with the tops of these. Maybe even though it's black, maybe I'll fade that a little bit too. Okay, there's a lot more that can be done. We can add a lot of different um, um, drawing crayons on there. Uh, we can do some stamping. Um, you know, this the part of this collage and the mixed media that happens is there's so many different layers. Um, it's just a little bit here and a little bit there, almost like our lives. You know, our rich history that we've um, we've accumulated over the years. You know, that's what goes into these pieces. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. Um, what I have to do is I'm going to show you is I am before I do the image transfer which now let's get this out of the way. This will be the image transfer and I'm going to put the image transfer a little off to the side here and it's going to be the tree and then I'm going to react to it. So everything that I do to it, I react to it as a way I like it, I don't like it, add more, don't add more, push back, um, you know, maybe cover over something. So I am going to, in order to do this, I have um, added more acrylic on here and I want this image transfer to really adhere to the surface of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm just going to give add a, a layer of the gloss medium, okay, and I'm going to um, give this a coat just over and that little guy here where it was torn kind of came up, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hair dryer, I'm going to dry this really quick and I'll be right back and um, show you how to do the image transfer. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to cut off the tape and we're going to see what this little piece looks like. Okay, so be right back. Okay, um, I've given a coat of the gloss, sealed everything in. Um, the reason I do that is sealing everything in is some of these torn paper edges, when I add water to remove the back of the image transfer, it may lift up. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure everything is protected there. So the next step um, at this point will be to um, take this tree and then kind of line it up to where I would like it. Um, and I'm going to, oops, getting stuff here. I'm going to lean it over to the side, I think. Um, I could play with either side here. Let's see what words are kind of left over here. It says, for him to get back to sleep, flung over his hands, see her face, has been a noise. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do is I'll bring this down just a little bit um, because I have to be aware of where this one inch tape is there. Um, so I'm going to bring that up because I don't want to cut the top of the tree off. Okay, so um, now the image transfer has been coated um, three times with the gloss, but not on the back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, release paper and then I'm going to use the iron. And I'm going to fuse this on. I'm just kind of making sure that it's all on there. Like I say, these, these tack irons, it says 280 degrees, so it's pretty hot. And peel that off. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to let this um, cool down a bit. Um, just so that I'm aware, this is like, you know, there's the line of the tape there. It's about that. Just so that we have an idea when we cut this off, what's going to be cut off here in this area. And like I said before, you don't have to tape the edges. You can go right to the edge with your collage. I just like to do this, especially when I'm um, working with everybody in the class. It allows them to do all these different things to the surface. And then when we cut the tape off, we have a nice clean edge, and you'll see that. Okay. 
So at this point, I just get a rag and um, I've moistened the rag with water. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, apply that moisture. And you can already start to see a little bit of the tree coming through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub this off. And this becomes the image transfer where you can see through the image and there's... Um, you can see the words beneath there. You can maybe see the color changes that are there. It's a faint image that was on, so it wasn't as detailed. So it just gives it a nice soft image over that. And what I'm doing now is um, the gloss and the ink all fuse to the surface of the collage, and I'm peeling the paper back off. So you get all these little bits here. All right, and then afterwards, what you need to do is you need to seal this in. So right now I'm going to come on with a little gloss, and I'm going to come with my paintbrush, and I'm going to seal this and stop any further process with this image transfer, because what happens is there's still a little bit of the paper on there, and it can turn to a like almost like a cloudiness, and we don't want that to happen. It's called paper bloom. And so now we're going to do that, okay? And... Um, I would dry this with a hair dryer, but what we're going to do is we're going to move a little bit faster and we're going to cut off the edge. So I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to pull up my tabs here because I used that tape before and the tabs are going to kind of help me out to um, as a guideline for the ruler. Okay. All right. There's a lot of process work with this, and sometimes people don't like to work with a lot of process, a lot of different supplies, um, and you do bring a lot of supplies. I bring a lot of supplies to all my classes and workshops just so that we can be in the moment of working with these different mediums. Um, it's just, all I can say is it's just, it, I've been doing this for like over 25 years, so, and I have a short attention span so this it, it's really I enjoy it quite a bit you know exploring what I can do now um, at this point I'm using the tape I don't go on this side because I don't want to mess anything up so I stay on the outside I use the tape as my guideline okay and then um, I didn't I don't have to go all the way to the edge but I'm going to start in here and um, this does take practice um, sometimes I cut all the way through if I have more layers of paper, I have to apply more pressure. And so why it's nice to use the painter's tape, and here, get that, is, um, and delicate is so that, see, when you pull this off, you're not pulling off the top layer of the watercolor paper. So what we have, and then you have all these little, little bits there. And because I'm right-handed, I'm just going to kind of turn this around. And as you can see, you have a nice, clean edge that's there. And here we will um, use that, the shininess of the rulers kind of flashing at you here. Okay, pull that off, gently just pull it off. Now I don't want to pull this end cork here, I want to still use that. Okay, and here's this here, and bring that in. Line up um, to the edge of the tape, whoops. Okay and gently cut. Now this corner had a little bit more. So you just have to learn when to apply the pressure. See like to go through all these layers. There's quite a bit there. So now I just have to bring that in. Okay, and we'll go on that side. And we're almost finished here. have a nice little piece here. You can still do more to this if you want. Evaluate it. Um, if you wanted to come back into this, I would put some more tape on the edge, but you can always add, you know, a little piece of collage paper um, on the surface here because it's already been glossed. This has been glossed. So, um, but I think this piece is nice. I, I'm comfortable with it. I, I like the movement that my eyes are making, you know, looking around the um, page with this here. So, We'll just kind of bring it up a little closer for you to check it out. 
Alrighty. Hope to see ya up at Dillman's.